What's up guys? Today I'm going to be reviewing two new palettes that are coming out in this like upcoming wave of new palette launches. They are from Urban Decay and they are launching two on the run mini palettes, kind of smaller color stories from the larger Born to Run palette they came out with probably over a year ago. So I'm gonna be doing swatches, a couple looks with these and just let you know my overall thoughts. So let's go ahead and dive in. Um, it's kind of funny the timing of getting these. Urban Decay sent these to me a couple days ago and I had actually just gotten back from a trip last weekend visiting my sister in Kansas City. And to go on that, I've been trying to use stuff in my collection and so reaching back into things that I wish I'd been using more was my Born to Run palette. Literally took this with me this weekend and was so excited to get back in here because one thing that I loved about it was the variety of color and texture. You have everything from more colorful shades, classic neutral shades, which are honestly what I stuck pretty closely to with the exception of like some smoky greens that I popped on at the night. But I was just really excited to dive back into this palette because it's one of those that even at the time that this launched, there was another wave of palettes then and I feel like it just kind of got lost in everything, but it's actually a really good palette. So the story behind these mini palettes, Urban Decay has launched a few of these before and basically what they kind of do is take like a subsection of the palette and blow them out into a mini color story. So for instance, you have this one called Highway Queen on the run mini palette and it is an orangey coral color story. It's a cardboard palette. You get um, a mirror up here and it is magnetize so that it will clamp, not clamp shut, but like stay closed if you want to go throw it in your bag, which presumably you'd want to do since they're so petite and travel friendly. So like I said, in the Highway Queen palette, you get more of the bronzy orange corals that there are like two, three-ish of in here. None of the shades in the mini palette are the same as those you get in the Born to Run palette, so you don't have to worry about duplicating in your collection. There are eight all new shades in the mini, and the same can be said for the other palette they launched here, which is probably my favorite. Um, it's the G Train, and it is nothing but greens and br bronzy, like cool bronzy. I just, it's a really interesting color mix in here to me, among other reasons that I'll talk about later. And so you can see this is kind of an expansion of this, um, basically the shade that I wore last weekend, which is Wonderlust, and a little bit of smog over here, one of my favorite shades from Urban Decay. But these two are kind of like the inspiration for a G Train. So basically with these mini palettes, you're kind of trading out the variety, the choice you get from the Born to Run palette and exchanging it for portability and concentration of shade range, basically. You know what I mean? Each of these smaller palettes is 25 bucks, so half the price of what you would pay for the Born to Run palette. However, as I looked up the Born to Run palette online, Sephora has it half off, and I feel like almost more than any other eyeshadow palette out there, I see the Born to Run half off all the time at various, maybe it's just Sephora, but I feel like I see it half off a lot. So at this point, it's kind of like six of one, half a dozen of the other in case you're in between the two, you can't or don't wanna pay the 50, basically $50 for the Born to Run and don't mind having a more condensed color story. Well, this way you can kind of have it all and just get the Born to Run. But that's more of a PSA in case you're interested in getting the Born to Run. Let's go ahead and talk about these minis in here. So in Highway Queen, this is what is on my eyes today and you get four matte shades and four textured shades. There are a variety of textures, shimmers. I think Urban Decay calls them transformative shades, but basically four mattes and four that have some sort of shimmer to them. There is Coast, which is a matte cream, Highway Queen, which is a soft pinky salmony cream, Shag Van, which I feel like was a missed opportunity for Shag and Wagon, but it is like a mid to deep burnt orange and Road Soda, which is more of a burnt creamsicle kind of orange. Then in the shimmery section, you have Backseat Babe. This is like kind of the shimmering equivalent to Road Soda, but with a gold shift to it. Then there's Pull Over, which is a vibrant copper shade. Rest Stop, which is a pink with a gold shift to it. And then Roswell, which is more of a cooler bronze as opposed to Pull Over, which has a lot more copper in it. Very, very warm. So today on my eyes, I put Road Soda in my crease first, really built that up as a nice blending shade. Then I took Shag Van and put that in my outer corner and along my lower lash line line just to try and add some depth in here. Then I took pullover and ran that all across the lid, but you can kind of see that for as much depth as I had hoped and tried to add with Shag Van, it really all just looks like one shade across the lid. 
I think anyway. So to try and add a little bit more contrast, I first went in with Rest Stop. I used a brush to pat that on the center of my lid and didn't see a whole lot of change there. So then I went with my finger to the shade Back Seat Babe and pressed that in the center of my lid. Saw a little bit more of an improvement, like kind of brought the center of my eyes forward to give that spotlight effect. But overall, I feel like there is not a lot of contrast in this palette. And if you've been with me here on the channel before, you know, I like a lot of contrast in my eyeshadow palettes because I think that is what gives you the variety to create a ton of different looks with it. Even though I haven't used this, but for more than like twice, I don't think I can get more than three or four looks out of it just because some of these shades are so, so similar. There aren't a whole lot of ways to make them pop against each other, either with different tones or textures or colors. Like it's very monochromatic, which is great if you love um, a monochromatic eyeshadow palette. It's not my thing. So this, that's why this is not my favorite, but could be great for you if you do love a warm copper kind of color palette. So that's the Highway Queen palette. Now let's talk about the G-Train palette, which I gave away earlier, is my favorite of the two because, I mean, basically for all the reasons that I just mentioned, this has the contrast both in color, in texture, in finish. This actually only has three matte shades in it, whereas the Highway Queen was an even split of matte and texture. There are three mattes in G-Train. Subway, which is a great crease shade for my skin tone. It's like a mid-tone, slightly warm camel shade. Then there's Tunnel, which is this really rich red-based brown. And then there is G-Train, which is a gorgeous, like, piney sort of green. And then breakdown over here, it kind of looks matte in the pan, but it's actually more of a satiny sort of highlight shade. Really pretty, especially as a facial highlight. I mean, you could really multitask with this and the next shade over um, beside it, City Kitty, as a highlight or as an eyeshadow and, and a highlight on the face. City Kitty is a really pretty iridescent golden shade. So it has that frosty base then with that really warm, vibrant gold shift to it something I love in both an eye and facial highlight. Um, Trax, which is this chocolatey shade that leans a little bit copper because it's very warm, almost like tunnel, but lighter and obviously shimmery slash metallic. Then there is Night Trip, which is basically identical to G-Train in terms of color and tone, but again, with that shimmer in it. And last up is Jolt, and this is another one of those transformative shades. But I honestly, I mean, it's, it's a little sheer. Actually, no, it's not really sheer at all. It doesn't have a duochrome to it. It doesn't have an iridescent shift to it at all. I don't know why they call these transformative shades unless I'm mistaken about which ones are transformative, which is a definite possibility, but maybe City Kitty is the transformer in here because it has that shift. I'm not sure. Either way, something that popped into my mind when I saw that these palette contained what Urban Decay calls like transformer shades is, it is so weird to me that especially now that textures and duochromes, multichromes are becoming so popular, which I love, of all the brands that I thought would have really pioneered in that space, it is Urban Decay and they haven't really gone there. You know what I mean? Like Cleona Cosmetics, even Pat McGrath with the textures in her eyeshadow palettes. Like there are a lot of brands out there that I definitely didn't see coming when it came to coming up with really crafty, innovative color combinations and textures. Just given how Urban Decay started in the beauty industry, they were really the rebels. I, I expected them to do that. And just seeing that that's what they're calling transformative shades. I don't know. For some reason, it made me think about that. I don't know. Is that just me? Moving on. To get the look I did using G-Train, I first started with Subway, applied that all throughout the crease. Then I went in with Tunnel and really deepened up that crease, both on the inner and outer corner too, like inner corner, outer corner, and then connected them in the crease, leaving the center of my lid blank because I wanted to go in and do kind of a spotlight sort of situation. I went in with Night Trip, that pretty shimmery emeraldy pine green and pat that in the center of my lid, leaving a little bit of space in my inner and outer corner so that tunnel could still shine through. But you can also go and touch that shade back up if you feel like it's lost intensity. And then in the very center, because I wanted to use the transformer, I went in with Jolt. And I do really love the just the pop of greeny gold that put in the center of my lid that then complemented the green that was under it and then contrasted with the red brown that was on either side. What I love, another thing I love about this palette is how because these brown tones have a red undertone to them, they just pop so much against the greens next to them because they're on opposite, they're complementary colors. So I just think this is such a well thought out mini. If you're gonna pick up one of these, this is the one that I would recommend if this color palette appeals to you. Um, that said, I don't know that either of these are absolutely necessary if you feel like you have similar shades in your collection, which I definitely 
you know, I definitely think I could, especially in the Born to Run palette. Like I said, no shade is identical, but you have a, a more abbreviated version of that color story, like the emerald, albeit a little bit more muted emerald, the oranges and things like that. And honestly, if you want a wider variety of shades, you should pick this up while it's 25 bucks at Sephora. Not to say that these are not good, it's just all about preference and the choices that you have, the choices that you can make, which are becoming increasingly abundant in the beauty world, and sometimes just too much, you know what I mean? So so let me know, let me know what you think about these. Let me know what other palettes you are planning on picking up in this, you know, palette frenzy that is slash about to happen. As I make this, um, Tati's palette is going to launch, I think, tomorrow, and I so so, so wanted. I probably don't have a chance of actually catching it when the site goes up because I think everyone really wants it, but it is definitely at the top of my list. So let me know down in the comments below. Thank you guys so much for watching. Please don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already, and I will catch you in the next video. Bye guys.